Um, hi guys, I just wanted to do a quick hello, um, just uh, to do a quick intro to what I want to do on this channel from now on. Um, I'm the mad person that has paid uh, nearly, well, pretty much original recommended retail price for a computer from 1989, the uh, Commodore Amiga 500 Batman pack. I'll put a link to the story as to why I've done that. Uh, it's just a hit of midlife nostalgia, nothing more. Um, but what I want to do, um, as you'll read in the story, I won't actually get to see the machine. I bought it at the end of last year, um, end of 2018, um, over eBay. I won't get to see it until the end of 2019 um, because it was in the UK and so I had it shipped, shipped to my parents' place in the UK where I'll open it pretty much 30 years after, I give or take um, about a week or so, um, after I originally purchased it, uh, purchased um, my original one. Um, it had to be the Batman pack because that's the one I had as a kid. Again, the full story is on the um, English Amiga board um, and I'll put the link in the description. It's just something I had to do. Can't can't explain why. Only those of you that have been through it will will understand, and those of you that are too young to understand will get there one day, and you'll find yourself doing crazy things like this as well. Um, so I just wanted to say a quick hi. Um, I want to sort of de Amiga between now and then. Obviously, I've been playing with emulators and that kind of thing, um, but I don't want to spoil the experience of unboxing and then. Um, playing with the original equipment again and I think there's a danger in uh, in playing too much between now and then that it will sort of uh, dilute the experience. So what I intend to do is just record it in a very short space of time, basically the games that I got with my original pack, um, and I'll go into that a little bit more in a second. Um, so I'll quickly do a record over the, you know just a few short days, but I'll release them and my thoughts on those games that I got with that pack um, over the series of several months to take me through the year, basically. Something to look forward to releasing um, every month so that maybe the year will be going a little bit faster um, than it would if I just literally be sitting Sitting around trying to concentrate on work on other things um, but really just wanting to get to the UK. I have other reasons for going to the UK obviously not just to pick up this computer um, visiting friends and family and that kind of thing but this year picking this computer up is I can't even describe how excited I was the day I bought it but I bought something else off eBay as well um, so I wanted to start this with this other purchase um, this video series um, because it kind of puts things into context and again click on the link to read the full story but the other thing I bought off eBay recently is this and there's a very good reason why it had to be Amiga format and it had to be October 1989 okay and so I bought this and I did have this shipped um, to to Australia uh, which is where I live um, so that I could actually look through this before I didn't have to wait a year just to see this magazine. Why this magazine? Well, it has a Xenon 2. Uh, didn't come with the disc, although another person off the forums um, was selling a heap of discs and he has kindly separated the disc from this magazine. So now, hopefully, if he watches this, he will understand why I wanted this particular disc. So the cover disc is on its way again to the location in the UK where I'll pick up my Amiga um, and other things as well but um, it'll be nice to reunite the disc with this magazine. But it's not just the Xenon 2 um, demo that I wanted this particular magazine for. This is very particular, um, October 1989, as I said. I remember clearly having this magazine. I loved this logo. Um, and I, in fact, traced this and recreated it on some of my school folders and other things um, because I thought this was this is brilliant. Um, absolutely love this design. Um, but it wasn't just for the design, but it is a very distinctive design. Um, it was for this. And again, if you read the story that I'll link to, and I will sort of give a summarized version as we go through this in a moment. But um, if you read that, this will all make sense, okay? Because what you'll find in that story is the fact that when we bought my original Batman pack, um, we were doing things on a budget and we wanted to get the best deal. So rather than buying it in a retail store, what we actually did was we went to a thing called, oh, and I think I've gone too far. I think it's on page 18. I knew I should have put a post-it note on it to make this go smoother. But you know what? I just want these. I do actually do video editing and stuff, but I just want this to be short, sharp, and sort of non-task intensive, as it were. Here we go. Here's the page. Um, because I just want it to be natural. I don't want it to sort of fake it all together. Um, so we went from Kent all the way up to London to this. And you can see here, here are the dates. 
Where are the dates? Where are the dates? Friday, 24th of November. Saturday, 25th. Saturday was when we went up. And Sunday, 26th of November. This is 1989, as you saw on the cover. Okay. I thought, I, you know, sometimes you're not sure if your memories are clear, but I remember specifically going to this thing called the Computer Shopper Show in 1989. And the reason we went there was to try and get a good bargain on a Commodore Amiga. I have blurred several memories into one because for years I was saying I went to Earl's Court but it clearly says here that it was in Alexandra Palace which I'm quite happy about because Earl's Court doesn't actually exist as a venue anymore I believe so um Alexandra Palace I believe is still standing is that right not sure somebody can let me know I know I did google the two and I'm pretty sure Alexandra Palace is the one that is still standing um but yeah basically this was like a trade show open to the public um and you could go there and now, in all honesty, uh, here's the thing to get your tickets, so you could actually, because you had to pay to get into this thing. Um, but uh, it probably wasn't this magazine. I, I got this magazine, I definitely got this magazine because I distinctly remember this cover. Whether it was this magazine or not that we ordered the tickets from, I, I honestly can't, I can't tell you, I don't know. Um, but the fact that I distinctly remember this awesome design and it has this in it. It took me quite a while to sort of research which magazine. Again, obviously the, the month and everything was giving me a clue as to when it should be, because obviously it was before the show, and the show was in November. So I took a bit of digging using the um, online archive.org um, to sift through pages and pages. And then when I realized which magazine it was, and again, I had to re-own this awesome cover, um, then it was just a case of eBay hunting. Unfortunately, somebody was selling one. So I'm so pleased, because this, for me, this is part of my collection. I don't want to randomly collect a heap of Amigas. I know some people are into that, and I respect that. I do want to get a A1200, because I see that as possibly the upgrade that I never had, if that makes sense. And even the prospect of that, excites me don't tell the wife i actually bid on one today but i'm not expecting to win that and i've out been outbid already and i'm going to sit on my mouse no don't sit on the mouse because it'll keep clicking i'm going to purposely not bid anymore on that particular one because that's one with some signosis history and i'm not going to get into a bidding war on that although what a wonderful machine that would be to own and good luck to whoever gets that i've spent my budget and don't forget i've also had to buy tickets to the flipping uk as well to actually um to, to go over and collect this machine but I just wanted to put that piece in the puzzle for you. You know, if you read the story online, my entire family went from Kent to London. We went to the Computer Shopper Show in November 1989, and we went store to store, and we basically did that to try and get the best bargain. And the bargain that I ended up with was the um, famous Amiga 500 Batman pack, which is why that's the one I've repurchased, because that's the one that holds the most sentimental value. Had to be in box with all this polystyrene, and I was so lucky to find one. Um, and, but I also got thrown in the, um, the 10 star games pack um, as part of it and a joystick. <sighs> My memory is a bit fuzzy on the joystick to be honest. Was it the Cheetah 125 Plus? Or did I already have that with my Spectrum Plus 3 that I have before it? And was it actually a Quick Shot 2? It may have been a Quick Shot 2 that I got with it. Anyway. Um, and then my brother threw in some more money. Again, all the details are in the story. Um, and he, um, and, and um, we got a flight yoke slash steering wheel. Um, and I've, I've got to stay off eBay because there's one of those for sale as well at the moment. And I'm, oh, and that's actually in Australia, South Australia. Do I, don't I? Anyway, so we got that. And you also got the Star Wars trilogy for me as well. And, and the whole Amiga purchase, it was a big event. Most of the family, like I say, all came with me. So yes, we made a saving, but we were to spend the money again in train tickets and tickets to the show easily. Um, so I'm not sure how that worked out. Um, and also, um, it was a long time saving. I mean, a lot, of the, a lot of you came from that same era and the same sort of background where things didn't come easily. So, you know, it wasn't something I could just rely on the family to buy for me, although generous though they were to a fault. You know, they encouraged me and I had to save and save and save and uh, not buy uh, computer games for my Spectrum. And I loved my Spectrum Plus 3. Don't go telling me it was an Amstrad. It was a Spectrum as far as I was concerned. Um, I don't care if it says Amstrad on the, on, the, um, on the circuit board when you open it up. I never opened it up, so I wouldn't know, would I? So it doesn't matter. It was a Spectrum. Um, but love that the machine that I did. I had to sell that machine to get the Amiga. So, you know, those were the times we lived in. It's a bit different now where I've got more machines that I know what to do with. And, you know, maybe I'll let you in on some of that um, as we go through. 
I don't want to be, I don't want to tread on anybody's toes, can I put it that way? Lots of people cover this scene and I think there's room for everyone and everybody's got their own little flavour. I don't, um, look, first of all, kudos to people like Dan Wood. I know he doesn't do that much anymore apart from the Retro Hour podcast. Um, Dan Wood and Nostalgia Nerd, definitely an inspiration from just reinvoking those emotions and even down to people that just upload Amiga music videos and stuff like that. It really just sort of just takes you back to, to a different time um, and, and you have to have experienced it to understand what it does inside you to be taken back to your childhood like that. Um, so those that have gone through and done the interviews with the Commodore um, um, employees and all of that, you know, great work and that's awesome and all that kind of thing. Um, there's the other guy who's the one that does all the um, Aros videos. Can't think of your name right now. Sorry about that. Is it Steve someone or John someone? Can't remember. Anyway, uh, but uh, and also the Guru Meditation, the American guys as well. Even though they're Americans, they're fine. Um, bit of a joke there. Um, but uh, you know, all of these are sort of gone into sort of restirring, rekindling this passion for an old computer uh, that I had lurking down deep inside me. And there's lots of things from my past I could get back into, but you know, at my age, if you start re-skateboarding, you're just gonna break an ankle and stuff like that. And I do do mountain biking and things like that. But um, other than that, um, I think the Amiga is a great thing to waste some money on. <laughs> Not sure the wife agrees already. But anyway, so yeah, what I'd love to do is over this series of videos is unpack via emulation those games that I then originally got in that pack. So I haven't really seen anybody cover the 10 star games pack in much detail. And I don't want to review games. There's enough people out there doing it and doing it well. I don't want to talk about the different technologies. Again, Dan Wood, Nostalgia Nerd, Guru Meditation, they look up their videos, they do it wonderfully. Um, so all I'll really do, and, and if it serves as nothing else but a video blog to myself and my family and friends, is just sort of talk through the emotions that get re-stirred and the memories that come up when you hear that music, when the game fires up, when you start playing that game, and what my personal thoughts on that game were, not as a review, but just what I remember about those times playing that games. And I'll specifically just do the 10 star games pack. Um, Enough people have covered Batman, but it has to be done in there. New Zealand Story and FA18 Interceptor, maybe a bit of deluxe paint too. I mean, they were all they were all part of the package. I never really moved on from the, uh, you know, I jumped from the Amiga 500. The only upgrade I did to it was the 512K memory upgrade, um, as you kind of had to. I grew my expansive games over over several years. Um, but what I never really did was get into hard drives, didn't have a hard drive, didn't really get into use a workbench as a productivity thing. I remember typing some homework up on it and printing that out. Other than that, you know, people go gooey over, gaga, sorry, over, you know, Amiga-like operating systems and I've tinkered with that. But again, there's other videos on that. Um, and to be honest, it doesn't float my boat. I didn't really get into operating systems as such until I jumped into the PC area, era, sorry. So even though there is some nostalgia attack, attached to firing up Workbench, I didn't really do much in it other than I think change the mouse pointer <laughs> at one stage. So, you know, you won't see much of that kind of stuff for me. It'd just be the games, just, just the emotions and stuff like that. What I will do, um, what I have done, oh, I wasn't gonna go into the other room um, and I need to be careful because um, there's a TV show on and I don't want to have any copyright infringement. There is a couple of other things that I have, in fact, picked up. Oh, did I just get that TV in shot? There's a couple of other things I have picked up. I think I can edit the TV out if I caught it in shot in, in, uh, in, the, um, in the YouTube editor. Um, but, and again, they have Dan Wood to thank for this, uh, but uh, Amiga Forever with the DVD version um, with the, um, the interviews and the, uh, the um, uh, vigil footage and all of that kind of stuff of the shutting down of Commodore. Fascinating stuff. I've literally binge watched that over the Christmas period. That was great. And also I found this in um, uh, locally in Perth here, uh, which is where I live, uh, which is great. This was one of my all-time favorite games and I have a story to tell that, about that as well. And that'll probably come after this year, I think. Um, so that's the sort of thing I'll cover, but this is in great condition. So thank you so much to the seller. He was selling a heap of stuff at a bargain price, cheaper than I paid for the Batman pack. Heaps and heaps of stuff. Originally two hard drives, I think it was two monitors, floppy drives, games coming out of his ears, and a working Amiga boxed, but it wasn't the Batman pack. 
So you think, what are you talking about? You're crazy. So that was local. Yes, it was local. It's 45 minutes drive from where I live. I could have picked up all of that for less than I paid for a machine I won't see for another 12 months. She doesn't make a lot of sense. But anyway, I'm not buying the computer. I'm buying the memories. And, and this is one of them. This is one of my all-time favorite games. So I had to pick up that. That's the, I went to see the, his, the remaining collection because he started splitting it up. And out of all the wonderful games he had in great condition, this was the only one that I had as a kid. So this is the only one that I walked away with. So yeah, that's the kind of crazy thing I'm doing. Um, one thing I will cover on hardware though, is obviously I'm gonna be tripping over there to, to pick up the machine. I'm gonna be catching up with a mate um, when I'm up there that I went to, to school with, um, uh, that we used to play Amiga games with. So shout out to Lee. Um, but obviously we wanna play on the Amiga when I get there. But of course that thing's gonna be 30 years old. Um, I know it's a very good condition, well looked after one. Um, if everything the eBay, eBay seller told me is true, then it's gonna be great. And it has been tested and he sent me photos. Even after I paid for it, he sent me more photos of it running and all of that kind of thing, um, which is great. Um, so yeah, no point at that, at that point, in, no reason to lie at that point, um, because I already paid um, and agreed the sale, um, but he went that extra step. So I'm really confident that it's a good machine. Um, but I still want a backup because you, who knows, you know, and I just accept that as a possibility. I could fire that thing up and it could blow a cap or whatever, even though it's, um, you know, an early 500, it shouldn't do that. But, um, you just don't know, the power pack might fail or something, or we might be able to not get it working on the television. So, um, separate video that I will do, maybe the next one or maybe a little bit down the track is basically what kit I'm planning to take with me. It will either be um, this laptop, but uh, that's quite heavy, but it is running full Windows 10. And of course I could load up full Amiga Forever or just Win Your EE. And I've got all the games that I wanna play already set up, basically the original pack again, via emulation, plus some others that I owned. Or I will do a video on this because I know there's a bit of interest in using, looks like a laptop, but actually this is an Android tablet with a hardware keyboard, so I'll do a detailed video on that. But other than that, you're not gonna get any hardware breakdowns or anything like that from me. It's all gonna be about emotion um, and personal attachment to, to these devices from our past. So that's my introduction, probably a bit long. Um, hope you don't mind that, but um, yeah, it'd uh, be good to just share it with you guys over the next 12 months and and see where we go from there okay cheers bye